We're live from the sports car capital, Road America, in beautiful Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, for round number 20 of the National Sim Racing League Cup Series. Today, it's the American 180. Perhaps one of the trickiest road courses on the Cup Series schedule, 14 heli corners. The one that makes less mistakes is going to go home with a victory. As we come on the air and say good evening, friends, Marty Sakala with you. We hope you had a Merry Christmas, and we hope you continue, are continuing to have an amazing holiday week so far. Well, last week, it was an incredible race we had at Road America, a race that probably not a lot of us really expected, uh, not at Road America, excuse me, but at Iowa, and taking home the win Making his second start on the season was David Salter. Something we didn't expect. Crazy final four laps. If you haven't watched it yet, I tell you, do me a favor. After this race, make sure you go to the National Sim Racing League Facebook page. We've got the final laps of the finish posted for you. It was a three-man battle for the win at the white flag between Mark Sikosi, Ryan Broderick, and David Salter. And Salter, we didn't expect to come home with the win. Crazy race all the way down to the wire, and then turns three and four. Salter made the last lap pass. Qualifying underway at the moment. Let's give you the cup standings coming on in, give you the playoff picture after 19 races. Just seven races left to go until we begin the playoffs. Here's what the projected playoff picture looks currently at the moment. It is Ashton Crowder, Josh Susie, Tyler Isley, Mark Cook, Mark Sikosi, Kayla McCarthy, Otto Cruz, James Morris, David Salter, currently in via wins, but some of those drivers that are not in the series anymore will not be in the playoffs and move a couple of other drivers up. Here is how it looks via points. Josh Aaron is 10th with 518 points, 11th Briggs Swope with 478, 12th Alan Crowell with 469 13th, Justin Delt, he has 464. 14th, Jimmy Barr with 456. 15th is Justin Cope, he's got 383 points. And 16th is Dylan Clark with 376 points. First four that are currently out of the playoffs just at the moment. Brian Preslar, 17th with 344 points. Tom Perra, 18th with 343 points. 19th, John Crow with 298 points. And 20th is Jeremy Edwards in points with 295. Let's show you how Road America looks on your screen. There it is. 4.048 miles. 14 turns and an uphill front straightaway coming to the start finish line when you make your way into turn one a 90 degree corner followed by another 90 degree corner then it's downhill a light downhill into the more rain sweep a long straightaway going into turn number five which is very tight uh you got to be careful with the brakes it's very easy to lock up in the corner then an, another heavy uphill into a blind corner in turn number six then just about a 45 degree corner in turn seven into hurry downs. That makes a 90 degree left hand corner into turn eight, then around the carousel in turns nine and 10. Then it's the kink in turn number 11. Now in op open wheel racing normally, you can uh, let off the throttle and keep the car going. However though, you have to use the brakes in order to get around the kink, which is turn 11. Then at a kettle bottoms, which is 11A into Canada corner, a heavy right-hander just past that right circle with another heavy up, heavy braking zone. Then a blind turn number 13, and then turn 14, a right-hander brings you up to the heavy uphill like Sonoma, but a straightaway version of it into the start-finish line. You see on your screen, Kayla McCarthy in the number 24, just clocked in third quick in qualifying, two minutes and 14.49 seconds. Landon Lacey currently stands on the pole at a two minutes, 11.45 seconds. Was our pole sitter last night, or I should say last week. Excuse me, he started in second position. 
Mark Sakosi was our pole sitter last week. Under 15 seconds to go here in qualifying. Only eight drivers taking time. Everyone else starting from the rear and trying to avoid traffic. The one that can make their way to victory lane will be one that makes the less mistakes and also can find the breaking points perfectly and can avoid locking them up. The main key here, if you're heavy on the brakes, you can keep it straight. But if you make one move of the wheel, you'll have a lockup. And it could end your night. We're set to go racing here at Road America. Here is the starting lineup. On the front row, it's Landon Lacey in the 53 and Dylan Clark in the 34, separated by just about two tenths of a second. Row number two, Kayla McCarthy in the 24 and Ryan Broderick in the 5. Row three, that's Tyler Isley in the 17, Alan Crowell in the 54. Row number four, Jimmy Barr and Mark Sakosi in the 81 and 91. Rounding out the top ten, it's Brian Preslar in the 67 hey, and Josh Susi in the 12. Row number six, yeah. Briggs Swope in the number seven and David Smeal Jr. in the 29. We go through the rest of the grid. It's David Salter in the number 20. Last week's winner, Austin Griffey next to him in the number 57. Row 8, Josh Aaron in the 77, and Brian Wiggins in the 1. Row number 9, it's Justin Dilt in the number 19, and Ray Zercut in the 008. And starting from 19th position tonight is Tyler Rush in the number 27. Final words of wisdom from Race Control Director, Chris Lynn. Um, just be mindful of that. The restart zone was posted earlier to the, just past the NTT bridge sign billboard thing uh two yellow marks on the wall with a break is any questions or thoughts concerns very concerned <laughs> so this will be a long <laughs> pace lap don't start Newman. i got you landed I would probably expect this pace lap to just be about maybe three to four minutes before we go and take the green flag. As the field makes their way off, 14 drivers took the grid. I think other drivers are going to weigh in then hit pit road. I think some of the notables, Tyler Rush, Ray Zircott, Mark Zacosi, Austin Griffey, Josh Susi were the ones, and let's, let's check iRacing here and see if we have any disqualifications. Uh, Rush and Zercut have disconnected. Austin Griffey is still on track. No words of a disqualification in any way whatsoever. But I would expect Sakosi and Susie to start from pit lane, wait five seconds, then they can go out onto the racetrack and I think that's that's a good strategy. Avoid the chaos. Focus on your break points. At the same time, though, the break points won't be really key. Because when you have a car in front of you, don't worry about your racing line. Just worry about trying to pass them and avoid hitting them. Of course, it's kind of like that for iRacing a lot this week. You know, we've got uh, the trucks and the Xfinity Series at Watkins Glen International. So I have a feeling a lot of drivers have been making some practice. I know yesterday I was racing on C-Fixed Officials and I ran into Tyler Isley in the number 17 and he messed up turn number one. I don't expect it from him, but you never know. Going around the carousel now at the moment. 
Got to be very careful as well about pacing. Especially if you're behind the front row. Front row doesn't really have to worry about it. Got to give a lot of space to the car in front of you because they could be braking instantly. And you could ram into the back of the car in front of you and already give yourself some damage. Remember, no quick repairs in the National Sim Racing League Cup Series. So you have to keep that in mind. Great give you your race analysis for tonight. You saw it earlier, 45 lap stages will end at laps Coming. 10, 20, and 45 around the four mile road course. Again, there you see the map on your screen. Altitude 1,065 feet. That is the elevation change for those wondering. I mean, not the elevation change, but that is where the start finish line is based at Road America. Here's your weather report. 82 degrees the track temp, 81 degrees is the air temp on December 29th, 2021. Considering the day is based off of winter conditions, normally it's snowing here. iRacing Tom is at 1 p.m. 81 degrees humidity. They make their way to the final turn. We say... Race fans, it's time to strap in and hold on tight because these men and women are about to turn them loose and drop the sledgehammer. Here they come to the start finish line. It's showtime from Road America. Drivers exiting pit lane as they make their way into turn number one. We'll update you on all the accidents that happened throughout the night tonight. It's Dylan Clark gets the advantage off of turn number one over Landon Lacey. Followed by Ryan Broderick, Kayla McCarthy, Alan Crowell, Tyler Isley, David Smeal Jr., Jimmy Barr, Brian Wiggins, Brian Preslar, the current top ten. They make their way down the Moraine Strait under the Sargento Bridge. Lacey trying to get a nice draft. Roderick trying to find a way around. Here's the battle for the race lead. Clark lets Lacey go as they make their way into the corner. A big lockup from Alan Crowell in the number 51. McCarthy shuts the door on him. That's for fourth position on the track. Now here's an uphill. You got to be very careful of a blinding corner. Brian Preslar off the pace for a moment as he goes off the course. And Brian Wiggins goes off a big off and into the tires he goes. And a front end damage early on for the driver of the one. Not the way you want to start the night, especially with no quick repairs. Here they go around the carousel as Josh Susi makes a pass on around. Currently one lap down. They get around the carousel, what looks to be clean. David Smeal Jr. had reports before the carousel went off the track. Here they are into the kink. Now a high speed to part of the track as they make their way into Canada Corner. Dylan Clark tries to look to the inside in the battle for the race lead. He tucks it back. The second part of the drivers, do they make it out clean? No reports of a crash currently. Oh, Alan Crowell goes off the track. That is in the final corner as they make their way off of turn number 14. Into the uphill part, and it's Landon Lacey that leads lap number one. So Lacey leads the first lap of the evening. Give us one moment. Trouble for Brian Preslar in the 67. We'll go to our replay for the first time tonight. You'll see a lot of replays come from us tonight. This is on board with Preslar. At the Canada corner. Just got on the gravel. I think he was just trying to let people go. And around he went. Just one moment here folks. As we take this opportunity. We're going to. Try and update all of our graphics. Still continues to be Lacey, followed by Clark, Broderick, 
McCarthy, Isley. You'll see the personal best start to improve here in just a moment. We've got a good battle on track happening. A couple of good battles here. We'll look here for sixth position. Let's go actually to third position as McCarthy goes around the outside on Landon Lacey to take away third. Here's the, tra here's the map on your screen. You'll see it throughout the night tonight. See where your favorite driver is as Lacey keeps the third position in the kink. Reports that Preslar has crashed once again in the number 67, and we'll go to the replay and see what happened. That is just before the carousels. He has a big off. So it's Dylan Clark that leads, followed by Ryan Broderick, Landon Lacey. Kayla McCarthy, Tyler Isley, Jimmy Barr coming across the line now. So our timing updates. Fastest lap of the race belongs to Dylan Clark early here with a 212.73. Let's go to the battle for second position. Landon Lacey all over. Tries to look to the right of Ryan Broderick for P2 as they shift their way down the Moraine Strait. Who can outbreak who first? in this hard left-hand corner. There's the outbreak and Broderick with the outbreak on Lacey. There's a small lockup from Broderick in the corner. Lacey cuts it back, tries to look to the left this time on the crossover. Broderick goes off for just a split second, not credited as an off track, and Landon Lacey takes away P2. Broderick got a little bit loose there following that uphill corner. Taking you to another battle on track. Here comes Josh Susi. Thought about looking to the left. Heading into the carousel for the number 12. Remember, Susi and Sakosi were the only ones that started from pit lane. And I've been able to make their way up. Susi currently in sixth position. Sakosi is in 11th. Got to be very patient with the throttle in the carousel as Susi lets off, entering the kink. Oh boy, a big lose for Jimmy Barr. Susie takes advantage of it, and Josh Susie takes fifth position. Biggest mover currently from 11th up to the fifth position. Another good battle here. Briggs Swope, a new paint scheme of the DraftKings Racing number seven car with an Alan Kowicki throwback. Salter behind him. Salter tried to look to the inside, last week's winner. And Swope gets away with the advantage. Dylan Clark, fastest lap of the race at a 2.12.41. We'll have our crew chief on throughout the night just so you can keep track of the updates. As we see, David Salter still trying to find a way around, right, right around with the number 20. Dylan Clark again, fastest lap of the race at a 2.12.41 and off track. Report coming from Alan Crowell in the number 54. That puts him all the way back into the eighth position. That is going down the Moraine straight. Not what Crowell wanted early. We take you back over to the Swope Salter battle for P9. Again, stage points on the line for the top 10. Stage one ending at lap number 10. Salter gained a little bit of an advantage. Why don't we compare the sectors? You 
Ramsey. Salter had the advantage by just about a tenth of a second. Just had a change for 14th, by the way. Diltz gets got past Wiggins. Another off track for Alan Crowell as he gets it back going. So we're about to have a three-man battle for eighth position. So right on board with Crowell in the number 54. They continue to close in. We'll check it. We'll watch him closely, see if he has another off track. Trouble, Brian Preslar. And he is making his way uphill once again. We'll check the replay and show you what happened. Another off track for Brian Wiggins in the one. And same with David Smeal Jr., who has crashed. And he has towed it to pit lane. We're not sure what happened with Smeal, but we're about to take a look at the replay and find out. So he is in the carousel. Oh, he just lost it coming out. Just guessed it way too much. Had a lot of oversteer. And that is likely going to end his night early. And Smeal is out of the race early here. So it's still in Clark that continues to lead. We'll go back to the Salter Swope battle. Salter was able to pass Swope for ninth position on the track. As we have reports of another off from Brian Preslar in Canada Corner. That's a huge off. The number 67. He spins it, gets it back upright. Not a good start to the night for Brian Preslar. And Salter reports he's gone off track. No sign of Salter. There he is. Down the moraine straight. Let's take a look and see what happened. Remember, they were battling for the ninth position. As there's a big lockup. Look at the rotors already glowing. It's going to be a big thing we're going to have to watch closely tonight too. So Dylan Clark makes his way off of turn number 14. He currently leads. He's about to put lap number five on the board. We'll take you side by side. If something happens, we'll come right back to you. Stay with us. Fastest lap for Clark, 213.80. Watching it happen live as, first off, we had Ryan Broderick spin out and David Salter and Josh Aaron just got together as we welcome you back 
to live coverage of the National Sim Racing League Cup Series American 180. Let's show you what went down. First off, we're going to show you something that you missed. That was with Justin Delt in the number 19. So that is into a left-hander. I think that's approaching the carousel, and it is. He just put too much oversteer on corner exit and goes off. You saw this as well. A great battle for position out of the uphill as Broderick lost to too much. Cost him two positions. Caleb McCarthy is up to third. Josh Susi is up to fourth. And now we show you this between David Salter down the Moraine straight. Josh Aaron was involved in this as well. Here's another lock up for Salter into the corner and Aaron goes off track too. They both locked him up and they get together. And Salter while we were on replay is this in the same corner. That's in the kink. Oh he didn't even use the brakes and pancakes the left side. Oh that's a hard crash for last week's winner. Salter is going to be done for the day. Didn't even use the brakes at all. Doesn't even downshift. That was a very big risk that Salter should not have done. So that puts him all the way back to 12th with major left side damage. Reports Broderick is off track in the top five once again. Doesn't lose a position, but lost a lot of time. I'd like to welcome our viewers watching live on twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala and facebook.com slash National Sim Racing. Let us know who you are rooting for tonight. We've got 19 drivers in the field. Excuse me, 15 drivers in the field, per se, here for this glorious road racing event. Let's show you what just happened with Broderick just a moment ago. Just got the grass and that's what led to the off track. Now they won't show up on the ticker when they go off track but on the map if they're glowing red you will know when they go off track, even if it's for a split second. You see the full field run down in the left-hand corner of your screen. Dylan Clark currently leads. Landon Lacey is the closest, is three seconds back. Let's go to a good battle here. And it's just eight-tenths of a second. Mark Sakosi trying to re regain some ground on Josh Aaron for 10th position. We'll watch this battle closely because when stage one ends at lap 10, Top 10 are awarded points, and Aaron caught the gravel for just a moment, and Mark Sikulsi is there in striking distance. Right on board with the number 91. Oh, reports, hang on. Reports, Lacey goes off track for just a second. Let's see this, what happened. Just caught it there. Let's go back to the onboard with Dylan Clark. Excuse me, with Mark Sikosi. Nobody, as you see, is shifting down to first gear. Reason why is because first gear, you just get a lot of wheel spin and can spin your car out. The only time I think you can use the next gen in first gear is at the Daytona Road Course. Oh, trouble, Brian Preslar on the 67. And that's in the same corner, Moraine straight. Sikosi is there on Aaron for ninth, for 10th position as they work their way by Preslar. Sikosi trying to go a groove higher around the carousel compared to Aaron. Oh. 
Aaron was able to gain some time luckily. Around the kink they go, Sakosi trying to find something. And there goes Aaron. Aaron goes off track and Sakosi just gets the pass and that is big. Again, stage point is on the line and Sakosi currently has it. So two laps to go here in the stage. We can tell you this, by the way. Recently, a personal best for Kayla McCarthy. Last time she came across the start finish line. Two minutes, 15.73 seconds. In fact, of all the drivers that had the personal best, she was able to get it. Currently lit up on my end right now, 215.73. Let's show you, by the way, who's got the best lap on the left of your screen. And of course, no surprise, it's currently Dylan Clark with a 212.41. It's a four second lead for Dylan Clark on Landon Lacey. Next car, by the way, they are approaching is the 19 of Justin Dilt's last car on the lead lap. First car that could get the lucky dog would be Brian Wiggins in the number one. Lacey goes off track for just a split moment. Caught the runoff area. The curbs are okay. In fact, new to iRacing, they don't have it though, um, is that they show you what's considered an off track and what's not. I know Watkins Glen has it. Spa Frankershop has it. They don't have it for Road America just yet. Check McCarthy's time here across the start finish line. Two sixteen point three four. So it's Clark, Lacey, Susie McCarthy, Broderick, Isley, Bar, Swope, Crowell, and Sakosi. Sakosi ten seconds behind Crowell for ninth position. Here's a good battle to watch here. Fifth position: Ryan Broderick versus Tyler Isley. Isley four seconds faster that time. Isley trying to find a lane, trying to go around the outside. A lockup from Broderick. Into turn one, gets way tight, and nicely goes by it. Broderick goes off course. A beautiful overtake by the driver of the 17 to take fifth position away. It's a charge racing two, three, four, five at the moment, or excuse me, a one, two, three, four, five currently. Clark, Lacey. Susie McCarthy and Icy, a KTS Motorsports one, two, three, four, five. You can say that too. So currently owning the field at the moment, they've got a setup developed for road course racing and off track for Kayla McCarthy entering the carousel. She goes around the carousel. Dylan Clark taking it nice and easy. And that is how your top 10 will look. So they come off the corner. Going to be close between Crowell and Sakosi when Dylan Clark comes across the start finish line. He'll see the green and white checkered flag fly. And there is the caution. To end stage number one, Dylan Clark. End of stage one is your stage one winner. Crowell beats Sakosi for ninth position. So Clark, your stage winner. We'll pause here. When we come back, we'll see our first set of pit stops on the day. Stay with us. It is the American 180 from Road America. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling.
We are back here at Road America. Stage one is in the books. And it's Dylan Clark that takes home the stage win. Now pit stops here coming up next lap as the leaders make their way up to the pace car. Pit. Pace car's in turn two. There you hear the message that the pace car is in turn number two. In fact, why don't we take a chance and talk with our stage winner, and that is Dylan Clark. Dylan, uh, just how's the car feeling right now? Fastest lap of the race. You're cruising early. Yeah, it feels really good. Um, really, I felt bad for jumping the start there on uh, Landon, so that's why I gave it back to him and into three. And uh, feels good. Uh, maybe a little tight on the long run, but uh, overall it feels good. Just trying to limit my mistakes and we'll go get another one. What is with the Sesame Street paint scheme? This is the funniest scheme we have seen all season long. <laughs> uh, well, this one goes out to my nephew out there. He's uh, just about a year old. Um, he really loves Cookie Monster. So uh, I figured Sesame Street paint scheme. On the right side it has uh, Monster. So... Uh, it, uh, it's really just for him. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. Best of luck to you the rest of the way, man. Thank you, sir. That's Dylan Clark in the number 34, your stage one winner. Only guy in check currently at the moment is Chris Lynn. Uh, rooting for Justin Dilts to win tonight. Yeah, I think that's a good pick. I'm, ro I'm rooting for Ray Zerkut. I think he's going to win. He hasn't joined in on the track just yet. He's blistering fast. I think he's faster than Dylan Clark, but we'll see what we'll see what happens tonight. Race car on the second back stretch. Waiting for the drivers to come on in. Some drivers still making their way up to the pace car. They got to be very careful making their way up. Look at this. Look at what some of these guys decide to do. It's the first time we've seen this. Under caution. Josh Aaron, we're going to call you out. Look at this major lock up here. And that's just trying to get up to the safety car, man. Come on. Brian Preslar just did it too, I think. Let's see here. Wow. Gentlemen, you guys do know we are under caution. You don't have to go at full speed. You can go at like 50% speed. Pace speed's like 60 miles an hour. Go at least 80 miles an hour or something. You'll make it fine. <laughs> Pit road is open. You'll see the times on the bottom of your screen. We'll focus on Dylan Clark as he makes his way in. The leader, Lacey, is pitting. One driver does stay out. That is a lap car. And that's Brian Wiggins. Pardon me, that's Justin Diltz. To expect the drivers to take four tires and full fuel. A pace lap is just about four minutes around Road America. So here are the stops. Of course, all the drivers starting on the left sides first. Do the pit road rules here. Close call on pit row, but nice stops as Clark wins the race off pit road. 14-1 over a 14-8 for Lacey. Josh Susie edges out Kayla McCarthy for third. Tyler Isley, Ryan Broderick, Jimmy Barr. Let's see who wins eighth. And that's going to Briggs Swope. Back. Out of pit road, we'll wait for ninth position. And that goes to Alan Crowell. And coming out in 10th position is Mark Sikosi. 
Pace car going on the hard left on the midfield straightaway. So Dylan Clark wins the race off Pay Road. He'll restart as the leader when we come back to Road America. Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. We're back here at Road America, currently still pacing. We should see one lap until we get to the green flag. Let's talk with let's talk with somebody else here at the moment. Let's talk with our sixth place driver currently. We'll talk with Ryan Broderick. Ryan, just to start things off, how's your car feeling right now? We know you did have a couple of off tracks, but overall, how is it feeling? Sounds good. Just what are your just what's the game plan going into stage number two? Probably same as stage one, just take it nice and easy. Yeah, I was kinda short shifting there, trying to keep the rear tires on me a little bit, so probably gonna try to be a little more aggressive. Um, I think we got a good enough car count probably fourth place and see if we can finish fourth in this stage and try to make our way forward a little bit and keep the car on the track because dirt on your tires does not help. Alright, sounds good. Well we'll let you go, man. Good luck. Appreciate it, God. Ryan Broderick will restart in row number three. As the field doubles up here for the restart, we'll reset the field here for you. What a for what a beautiful view of Road America. That would that's that'd be an awesome place to go to. I wouldn't even want a grandstand seat. I I just bring a lawn chair, a lawn towel or a beach towel, whatever you want to call it. I just race out. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. What the heck just happened? Are you kidding me? Oh, I love calling these people out. We get nothing to do under caution, so why not just show you the hilariousness of some of the drivers right now on the track? No offense to them. Okay, Mr. Wiggins, what did you do? Not even a front end on the car. I don't know how that car is still going. They're just having fun on track. They don't care what's going on right now. So, All right, but once again, beautiful view of Road America. Look at the crowd there. Look at the crowd here for some NSRO action. Let's reset the field. Dylan Clark, Landon Lacey make up row one. Row number two, Josh Susie and Kayla McCarthy. Row three, Ryan Broderick and Tyler Isley. Row four, Jimmy Barr and Briggs Swope. And row five, Alan Crowell and Mark Sikosi. 
Row number six, Josh Aaron and David Salter, and that's currently the ones that have made their way up. As we await Justin Delts, who did receive the free pass to come back onto the re back onto the lead lap, we'll start from the tail end. Those are some sick chrome wheels on Justin's machine. You know what? Why not? Let's just show them to you for fun. Look at those. Absolutely beautiful. Now the question is, does he lock up? He does not. Good boy. So the field is double fire as they make their way into Canada Corner. And we just await the restart. They make their way into the Speed Demon Setups Restart Zone. It's the opening just past the bridge. You'll see it right here as they make their way up into it. This is it right here. There goes Clark. We're back to green. Only six laps in this stage under the green flag. Nearly three wide out into the first corner. And it's Lacey with the edge. Zussi third. McCarthy hits the brakes. Goes back to fourth position. Ryan Broderick is in fifth. A single file. Broderick a little bit loose. They all make their way into turn number two. All clean and green for right now. Down the moraine straight. There you go. Landon Lacey trying to find a draft on Dylan Clark. But Clark pulled away with a beautiful exit. One driver is in the pits by report. It's Brian Wiggins. This could get interesting here in a turn number three. And everyone is away clean. Blind uphill corner. No issues there as Lacey tries to find a way to get up to Dylan Clark. Here's the battle for position. McCarthy and Broderick. Here's Broderick. Tries the inside. Last time they battled here, Broderick spun out and went off course. Had a nice save, though. Broderick with the corner advantage. They keep the grooves. And Broderick clears McCarthy for fourth. Now the old tough carousel. Jimmy Barr trying to close in on Tyler Isley. Brick Swope, though, all over him. Here they go into the kink. Kayla McCarthy now facing pressure on Tyler Isley for fifth. Any issues as they head into Canada Corner? We'll see. Mar oh, Mark Sakosi is at the wall. Big off for Sakosi. That may be the first off we've seen from today. No, it's the second off. I don't know. Take a look at what happened. I think he caught the brakes, went in the grass. Big lock. I've had to sweep it to the right or else he would have gotten into Crowell. And we are here in a new fastest lap of the race. Dylan Clark, 2-12-01. But Landon Lacey all over in the battle for the race lead. And we are hearing that Sakosi has brought the 91 in the pit road. Not the race he expected after starting from the pits to avoid a big turn one melee. Dylan Clark so much better on the exits. Landon Lacey so good in the entryway. Look how much Lacey closed the gap. And keeps it going. It was Clark, Lacey, and Susie, top three, all setting new personal bests. And we go back to the Broderick McCarthy sweepstakes for fourth. 
Here's the on board with Kayla 316. Down to four tenths of a second. A lower line for McCarthy compared to Broderick. Got to let off of the Kanky or even use the brakes if you have to. And Broderick still keeping the edge in Canada corner. Remember, Broderick was in that battle for the win last week at Iowa. Had a chance to win it, then got bumped and spun by Sakosi. And possibly the craziest finish we have seen all season, giving the win to David Salter, who's currently running in the 10th position. Dylan Clark just hit the 2.11s today, first time today. 2.11.19, top three again. This time it's the top four. Setting personal best, Lacey at 2.12.25. Susie at 2.11.72, and... Roderick, excuse me, McCarthy at 215.61 as the battle continues for fourth position. We did see a great battle just take place once again. Let's show you what just happened between McCarthy and Broderick. Look at the blocking by Broderick. The blocking Broderick across the stripe. McCarthy had the pass stuck. And then here's an outbreak. Entering one a bit. They both locked them up. Look at the rotors glowing on the left front. And Broderick maintains control of fourth position, but this battle not over yet. Reports that Preslar has gone off track in turn 14, keeps the car going. We've got this battle and a good battle for second developing between Josh Susi and Landon Lacey. This is coming into the kick. Oh, man. Lacey's showing some dirt. Susi trying to use it to their advantage. Canada corner. Another tough place to pass. Got to lock the brakes up. Susi has the pass stuck. He's got second position. Highest spot Susi's been in today as Lacey. Kicks up some dust once again. Watch what happens when they go into turn number one. We'll, we're going to watch Lacey. We're going to show you the right front. Give her the ticker here. Watch into turn number one if we have any lockups. Nice corner by both of them. Let's go to the battle for position here. Here comes the lockup potentially. Big lockup by McCarthy. Took a chance at the fourth position at the fourth position on Broderick. But Broderick again successful in the corner. In fact, Broderick and McCarthy both had their personal best as Tyler Isley locked them up. In a turn two. Four through six, by the way. Best laps. Broderick, a 215.36. McCarthy, a 215.51. Isley, a 216.09. Look at the right front. The brake rotor on Broderick. Glowing once again. Gonna be two laps to go next time by in stage two. Salter has gone off track in the 20. He is off on the map in turn two. Look at that right front rotor once again. Let's take the tower off, so we'll try and see if you can see it. I'm trying to find a, find a nice camera angle for you to see the rotor. Perhaps you'll see it this corner.
Watch here, do we have a lockup in the corner? Look at the brake rotor, look at the glow. Look at the glow, it only happens when he's braking though. But let's watch this closely once again. In fact, we've got a good battle for second taking place. Lacey, does he make a move on Josh Susie into one? No, tucks it back in line. As for McCarthy, can't close in on Broderick enough in the corner. Two laps to go, by the way, in stage number two. The pits are closed. There's McCarthy trying to go around the outside. A major lockup as the brakes are flaming. Broderick nearly goes off track. McCarthy took a shot at it. But nothing. Final driver currently in the top 10 for stage points. That's Jimmy Barr. And the number 81 who is 49 seconds back. Don't forget it's based off of when the leader crosses the start finish line. Susie and Lacey still go to work for second position. We'll see if anything happens in Canada Corner. I got traffic they have to work with. I want to say that's Preslar in the 67, and it is. And look at that. Beautiful pick for Susie. And a nice arc. Let's see how it works for, for McCarthy again on Broderick. McCarthy, I think, has better downforce compared to Broderick. And just keeps trying to find a way to send it in. This is the closest battle on track, and McCarthy is right there on Broderick. Here's McCarthy, does she have a chance here this time? She's right there, up on the spoiler, has to break though, nothing. Oh, but Broderick wider in the center of the corner and McCarthy is right there. Here we go. Can't find it once again. Final lap, by the way, in stage number two. Here's Lacey trying to lock on Susie, but a big lock up for the 53. We check the uphill once again for McCarthy and Broderick. McCarthy right there. Does she look to make the pass? Broderick plays defensive. Sikosi just said something on the radio. We're not too sure what it was. And McCarthy, not a good corner compared to Broderick. Look at the speed Broderick gained. Up to eight tenths of a second. Back to the battle for second spot. Heading to the kink. Susie and Lacey go at it. Can a corner if Lacey wants to make a move for second. This is the place to do so. Nothing may come down to drafting, but the drafting may not happen in time because seven seconds in front is still in Clark. Will come off a of turn number 14 to the uphill. See the green and white checkered flag. Stage one winner. This time he's stage two winner. That's Dylan Clark that takes the win there. They throw the caution out before the start Race finish line. Pits are closed. So that way, they catch up to the pace car instantly. 
So Clark takes the stage win, followed by Susie, Lacey, Broderick, McCarthy, Isley, Swope, Crowell, Aaron, and Barr. We'll step aside here once again. When we come back, we'll have pit stops from Road America. Stay with us. Back here at Road America, a beautiful shot of the driver's pit road is just about ready to open up. They are, drivers are currently in the kink right now. Let's take a look and see here. Let's talk with our second place driver at the moment. Let's talk with Josh Susi in the number 12 before he comes into pit road. Josh, I'll just ask you first off, just how's your car feeling right now? Uh, it's okay, a little snug. I'm fighting, uh throttle issues more than anything understandable walk me through that pass he made on Landon Lacey it was a fun battle you guys had for a second uh yeah it just looked like he uh he come off the that little high speed kink a little uh too wide and had to check up and uh it's hard really hard to pass here so you have to kind of take any chance you can get we have a lot of respect for each other so we aren't going to kill each other but it's definitely hairy going down into uh, I think it's Canada but uh Side by side, it was uh, interesting, but we made it work out. All righty, sounds good. Well, we'll let you go, man. Good luck. Thank you. Josh Susi, currently running in the second place position. Pit road is open. All the drivers come on in, and we'll watch the top two closely once again. While we're at, let us know who you're rooting for in the chat. It's been a pretty boring chat so far tonight. Hey, I'm just saying, people. I'm just saying. Top two make their way into the pits. And Clark first on the jack. Susie already out of the pits. 14 point into a 14.4. It's close out the line. It's Clark. Susie up to second. Or are they credit for Lacey? Lacey gains two spots on pit road. Listen to this. 58.3 on pit road. Was two seconds faster on pit road compared to the minute stops from Dylan Clark and Josh Susi. That is a big win for Landon Lacey on the pits. He gets the chance to restart as the leader on Dylan Clark. We'll see what happens when we come back to Road America.
Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. Ready to go back to the green flag at Road America. We are currently at two laps until we go back to the green flag. And let's find someone we can talk with at the moment. Let's talk with Landon Lacey, our race leader at the moment. Landon, uh, let's, I'll just tell you the pit road stats here. 58 seconds on pit road compared to Dylan and Josh's one minute stops. Uh... Just how's, how how that feel to have a great stop and restart in front of the leader? Uh, it feels great. You know, to be honest with you, I was just talking to the guys about it on the team and uh, told them I have to buy my crew a whole bunch of new Chevy Silverados for Christmas. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, that's it's great. It's going to work out for us here on this restart. Um, I, I think the 34 and 12 have better short run speed than we do, but uh, I think we have them on the long runs. How are you feeling on this restart anyway right now? I know when we had the start, uh, Dick Clark did get the advantage on you, however, though that was a jump start, but how are you feeling matching up against him on row one for this restart coming up? Um, I, I think with this restart not being on green and I actually have control of it, I think we'll, I think we'll be all right. All righty, sounds good, man. Well, good luck to you on these final 23 laps. Thank you, sir. That's Landon Lacey. After we get set to go green as we await the green flag for the restart, let's give you what is coming up next week for the National Sim Racing League. And we've got a fun one for you. Worldwide Technology Raceway. It's the Gateway 200. 200 laps, 250 miles. Don't miss out. That is the way to begin the new year on National Sim Racing League's Cup Series schedule. And, of course, we do want to mention as well what is starting up next week as well for 2022. That is the National Sim Racing League Elevated Outdoors Truck Series. Begin at Richmond Raceway on January 3rd. So do not miss out on that. That is going to be a fun one. Currently, we've got just over 10 drivers on the roster for the truck series so we hope you join us on that of course we can't do this series overall the cup series are all of our sponsors speed demon setups graphics and tv affordable seo and marketing elevated outdoors and butt kicker so here we go ready to begin the third and final stage and before we do that we did have reports of a crash Let's show you Brian Wiggins and show you what just happened. Just like what uh, Salter, same thing that happened to Salter, the exact same thing in the kink. Then we also heard that this happened with Justin Deltz. Lost control in the corner entering the carousel. Let's reset the field here for you if we can. Landon Lacey and Dylan Clark is row number one. Row number two is 
Josh Susie and Ryan Broderick. Row 3, Kayla McCarthy and Tyler Isley. Row 4 is Briggs Swope and Alan Crowell. Rounding out the top 10 is Josh Aaron and Jimmy Barr. Don't worry, they're coming up here at some point. They're in the, in the trees. Ta-da! There they are. There they are, just a whole bunch of trees. So Landon Lacey is the control car. The drivers will have one more pit stop between 5 to 10 laps to go. They go uphill. Here they come into the Speed Demon setup to restart zone. Where our camera is is where Lacey gets the right to fire. Green, green, green. Let's go. Back to the green flag. Lacey holds serve. Clears on Dylan Clark and Josh Susi. Let's see what happens in the corner number one. It's going to be close here. Clark tries to look to the inside. Lacey shuts the door. Everyone keeps it away clean. Here's Broderick inside on Susie for third position. Looking for a podium spot and Susie keeps the pass, keeps the position to him. The Moraine straight, what happens here? One staying single file for right now. Do we have any lockups? That's the real question. Here's Isley inside of McCarthy for fifth position. Who gets the pass? McCarthy goes beyond the rumble strips, but keeps control of P5. Everyone keeping command just to change for ninth position. Justin Dilt is by Jimmy Barr. Josh Aaron got the free pass, by the way, and is back on the lead lap. Dylan Clark, though, all over Landon Lacey in the battle for the race lead. And the heart-stopping carousel. Not really any double file racing going on at the moment. Let's see what Dylan Clark can do with this slipstream. Oh, trouble, big crash, Brick Swope goes around, same with Alan Crowell. Perhaps the biggest accident of the day right in the mix of things, right in the pack as we came back to the green flag. Let's take a look. Ooh, Crow had too much throttle, tried to save it right into Briggs Swope. And Crow comes back into traffic. Or everyone sees that one happening. Let's watch a couple of onboards here. Let's watch, uh, let's show you what Crow was seeing. Let's watch Justin Dilts' perspective. You see it. Now we got reports that Mark Sakosi has crashed in Canada Corner. Oh, somebody crashed in front of him. So it's Landon Lacey, Dylan Clark, Josh Susi, Ryan Broderick. We go to a hot battle happening. Justin Diltz, Josh Aaron. This is the battle for eighth. Right in the thick of things, you've got Jimmy Barr amongst it too. Oh, big set for Barr. Excuse me, that's Diltz. Oh, man, he goes off track. And that puts Diltz back into the ninth position. That was a fun battle to watch. Diltz went crazy there on the brakes. Josh Aaron, though, all over Jimmy Barr. Seventh spot battle is on the line. There's a lockup from Barr. Barr nearly goes around. Meanwhile, back up front, Dylan Clark still over Landon Lacey. 
The top two, by the way, looking for their first win and the berth into the playoffs. Coming to the kink. Aaron cuts it back. Does he play it safe? Oh, trouble, Brian Preslar. Moraine straight, no worries. Coming to 20 laps to go with Landon Lacey. Dylan Clark, does he look to the inside? Lacey with a defensive line to prevent a slingshot. And a nice arc from the 53 as the brake rotors start to glow. Down the Moraine straight, best battle on track for the race lead. Oh, Clark, a little bit loose in the exit of the straight. Thought about looking to the inside for just a moment. Lacey gets loose right in front of him. And somehow, Lacey maintains a half second gap. And trouble for Josh Susie, who is off just past the uphill corner. That allows Broderick to go for third position. Tries to look to the inside. Susie shuts the door. And trouble for Jimmy Barr off track in the exit of the straight. Big crash. Justin Delt is also around. That's both Delt and Barr that got together. Let's try and get you a replay here as quick as we can because we got good battles on the track. Barr had already locked the brakes up and dealt with a big deep and just sent it around. We go back. After Susie went off track. Stayed out in front of Broderick. Broderick and McCarthy closing in on Susie in the battle for third position. Now here's McCarthy. Look to the right of Broderick, but Broderick shuts the door. Got some crazy battles happening once again. Oh, Broderick! Off track. He goes up in the air. Same with Susie. They both go off track. Susie almost spins the car out and he's going into pet road. And that is an unscheduled stop for Josh Susie. He will have still one more stop to go. And that may end Susie's night. Oh, that's a tough break. Let's show you what happened in the final corner. Way too much understeer. And into the Sam Trap, and Broderick's read the same thing, too. Lacey and Clark continue to battle for the race lead. We'll pause here, and we'll go side-by-side side here at Road America. Stay with us. Pit stops are coming up next.
Landon Lacey, the race leader, is in the pit, so we may have misjudged our pit window, as we are thinking it's a 20 lap window to make it to the end. We welcome you back to live coverage of the National Sim Racing League from Road America. We just saw Landon Lacey make his way in. We also saw Josh Susi also come into pit road. So that gives the race lead to Dylan Clark in the number 34. Big lead on Kayla McCarthy and Ryan Broderick. So Lacey cycled through back to the sixth position on the racetrack. As for Josh Susi, he is out of the race. Susi is done for the night. So Landon Lacey playing with 18 laps to go. We're not sure how the fuel strategy looks, but it could be tight. Broderick kicks some dust up. That's a battle for third. Isley takes the pass. Oh, big lock in the gravel, and he's gone. Broderick also spins it out. That is just entering the carousel. They both get together. Preslar misses it. Isley, oh, man. The front end, the hood is damaged. That could end the night, and it, just when you think you've seen it all, Josh Aaron, folks, has entered the top five. So Isley's still in fourth position, but the question is, how much speed does he lose? Oh, oh, Sakosi, 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 in the cake. Man, the drivers are getting a little bit wild here at Road America. Presler. There's your number 67 daily promotion. He just says, I'm done. I've done it. Kayla's in pit road. We'll just have to see where she cycles through in front of the leader. You see Jimmy Barr off track in the kink. Sakosi reports he's back on track. He went off track at around turn number 14. Let's watch Kayla's stop here. Started from the third position tonight. We'll see where she cycles through. Lacey has already gone by and made the pass. So I think we'll see Kayla in second position most likely. Well, we've got a lot of things we have to digest here. Let's show you first what happened with Broderick and Isley. They go by Preslar and oh man, they split the 67 and they both lock them up and Broderick goes around and we'll show you the Tyler Isley meltdown into the wall. Slaps the tire barrier. Let's ride with Broderick here. Oh, he even made contact with Preslar. And good call for Broderick wasn't even on the brakes. Because if he hit the brakes with the grass, he's catching speed and he's going around. This has been, in the words of Chris Lynn, a wild third stage. And appreciate the support man for a good call. So that's how the field looks after all of that. We do have a good battle on track for sixth position. Remember, Kayla's got fresher tires than Jimmy Barr. So I think Barr will just let him go by. And that's in the kink. Here we go. Kayla will make the pass here. Ooh, Barr playing a little bit defenseless. Wow, Jimmy playing some defense on Kayla. Not really what Kayla wants. Many places Kayla could have made a pass there all over the spoiler. I think she'll get him on the straight. Still waiting. And there's the pass there. Jimmy Barr comes into pit road. So 
So Barr comes in along with Alan Crowell. So we'll see where they cycle through on track. Probably just around 9th and 10th. Diltz is 37 seconds back. Lacey. Hold up. Landon Lacey is out of the race. Oh my goodness. This is a developing story. Landon Lacey is out of this race. Let's show you what happened. Into the gravel pit, past the moraine straight, and a vicious shot into the concrete. Landon late. Let's show you from another angle. Locks them up. The brake rotors glow. They said they had enough. And boom. It took us a while to realize that just happened. And Lacey just said, I'm done. Unless that was a disqualification. But everything has changed as the race leader is in the pits. And we are hearing that Susie and Lacey both have disconnected from this race. Can tell you this stuff as well. Brian Presler is receiving a time penalty from what we are hearing. Someone else is receiving a meatball flag. As Dylan Clark comes back out onto the track in second position. Which means there's only one driver who is yet to pit. That's your current race leader, Ryan Broderick. So, cool to see Broderick get some leading time. Now Dylan Clark pitted on lap number 30. We'll see if Broderick decides to try and speed this one out until he's down to the last drop and try and come in for the fresher tires. And we'll see where he cycles through. Tyler Isley, we can tell you, still with the hood off, is running in the third position. Now Dylan Clark with the fresher tires closing in on Broderick. We got a big off from Jimmy Barr in the 81. That is in Canada Corner. Doesn't look like any damage. So this is your closest battle on track for the race lead. And I think we should see... The pass made by Dylan Clark in Canada Corner. Got reports Justin Diltz has jumped into pit road. Here comes Far. Oh, this is going to be a tough place to pass right here in the kink. No. If he made that pass in the kink, I would have lost my mind. Because that's a very rare place to pass. You do not want to pass in the kink. Instead, he'll try it in Canada Corner. There it is, Dylan Clark, easy button. Dylan Clark to the race lead. Johnny Taylor says some of them should have stuck it out. Looks like they dramatically need the practice, I agree. Brian Pretzlar in turn 14 has taken it to the pits. So at the moment, while we have a couple of other drivers in, Justin Diltz is in the pits. Brian Preslar is also in pit road. Here's how your field full field rundown looks. Of drivers that have pitted or have yet to pit. Clark has pitted. He's in first. Ryan Broderick is in second. He's yet to pit. Tyler Isley yet to pit in third. So second and third have yet to pit. Kayla McCarthy's already pitted. She's in fourth position. Closing in on Tyler Isley. Four seconds behind him. Briggs Swope comes into pit. He is in fifth position. Josh Aaron also comes into pit. He is in sixth. Jimmy Barr currently seventh, who is pitted. Same with Alan Crowell in eighth. Justin Diltz in pit row ninth. Landon Lacey is out of the race in tenth position. So we just await for the second and third place drivers to pit, each 16 seconds apart from each other. 
we'll take this chance to watch the DraftKings stops. And there goes Aaron. He's away. 14.7 second stop. Swope by long stop for Swope here. I would assume this is for optional damage or just messed up. So there he goes. Makes his way out on the track. So the only two that we have yet to see pet are Ryan Broderick and Tyler Riceley with 14 laps to go. Closest battle on track is for fifth, Josh Aaron and Jimmy Barr, the former with the fresher tires by two laps, which is eight miles, which is a big advantage. Lock up from Aaron in the corner. Past the Moraine straight. And Ryan Broderick is in the pits. We'll check and see here. Isley goes another lap. So that will put Kayla McCarthy into third. And when she cycles through, we'll be up to second position. Well, watch Broderick stop. The big question is if he has optional. Let's listen to his onboard here as he makes his way in. That's something you don't want to be doing. Laying on the throttle to increase the engine. I've never seen this before. He must. I think he was on the clutch. But got to be very careful about doing that. These are stock cars, not F1 cars. So that was a 14 second stop for Broderick. No offs needed. No optional needed. Time to give you your fun fact of the day. Only one driver has not received an off track and that's your race leader Dylan Clark who deserves to win this race. Still waiting for Tyler Isley to come in in the number 21. He's looking for the freshest tires possible. Yeah, Lynn, no crap. I just talked about it. <laughs> He's wheeling it. Oh, he absolutely is. McCarthy, by the way, just made the pass for second on Tyler Isley. Let's show you the replay and what happened. And the more rain straight. McCarthy down to the inside. Hits the easy button. Beautiful pass. And Isley, meanwhile, locked it up. Here he marks the Kosi is off the track. That is in the kink. Almost got that concrete wall, which would have ended his day for sure. Nah, dude, I was first. I said it before you typed it in. I saw it before. I said it before I saw your message. <laughs> hang on, hang on. We're going to have a debate here. We're going to have a fun little debate here. I saw it first. I put in the chat before you said it, though. No, no, I saw, I, I said it before you, I, before you typed no, no, the no, message. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when we get bored. I'm not bored. I'm watching a lot of good stuff. Yeah, same here, same here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll leave you alone. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Icely finally in the pits. That was Chris Lynn. We were just having a little bit of fun with. Has to back it up, and this will be a long stop considering the hood is off. For four tires and fuel. And oh, whoa! He goes fuel only. No required needed. Fuel only from Broderick. That is a bold strategy for number 17, and only is a second behind on Broderick. 
So 12 laps to go and your race leader continues to be Dylan Clark in the number 34. has been the dominant driver so far today. When we come back, we're taking you to the finish. Stay with us in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. We're back here, and the gap between Broderick and Isley has increased big time. 19 seconds. You saw where we were side by side. Isley went off track. Let's show you what happened. Isley with the lockup. Broderick with the lockup, and Isley just had a panic attack situation. And that puts him way back. Isley still remains in the fourth position, but he is 20 seconds behind Ryan Broderick. Only eight drivers are on the lead lap for the rest of the race, from what we know of currently. Should Dylan Clark keep this constant bobbling, whatever you want to say, on the field? McCarthy currently 33 seconds behind. Broderick. A minute behind, so only one, not a second behind, is Kayla McCarthy in second positions. Johnny Taylor, he puts in the time and it shows, absolutely. So nine laps to go next time by for Dylan Clark. He's going down the Maureen straight. We're taking you right to the finish the rest of the way. Talk about next week, that is coming up for the National Sim Racing League. How about a trip to Worldwide Technology Raceway in St. Louis, Missouri for the Gateway 200. That is going to be a fun one. You do not want to miss out on that. The National Sim Racing League will have, after tonight's race, we'll have six races until the playoffs begin. We've got outside of Gateway, we've got New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and we've got Watkins Glen, Indianapolis, Michigan, and Twin Ring Remote Motegi. Yes, going international. For the final race of the regular season. When the playoffs look like this. Darlington, Richmond, and Bristol. Las Vegas, Talladega, and the Charlotte Roval. Texas, Kansas, and Martinsville. And Phoenix ending the championship. Now it says the championship race is supposed to be held at Legacy Phoenix. We expect that to change though. That Now that iRacing has released the uh, new edition of Phoenix Raceway. Briggs Swope reports that he has been involved in a crash, currently still on the lead lap. See what happened to the driver of the number seven off track out of the Q2 
carousel and gassed it too hard into the inside wall. Currently in seventh position. How about, let's talk about Alan Crowell right now, number 54. Having a great day so far in this one. We came in seventh in the point standings. Best finish on the season so far is a sixth place finish that came at Circuit of the Americas. A very good road course racer. Looking to up it with a fifth place finish. Currently four seconds in front of the car that's behind him. Jimmy Barr in the number 81. Barr currently on track for another great finish. Last week was his best finish of the season. A fourth place finish at Iowa in the chaos. That went down there. So a sixth place finish for him would be his second best finish of the season. Second best coming on in was seventh. That happened at the Kentucky Speedway. Mark Sikosi just went off in Canada Corner. Let's show you that. Too much understeer in the number 91 setup. Not been the day Sikosi wanted after a great run for him last week at Iowa. Currently ninth, but currently ninth though. But however, though he is four laps down at the moment. Johnny Taylor saying too much front brake. Those things were glowing hard. Oh yeah, absolutely. Those rotors, pretty bad. I'm kind of curious, Johnny, and I know I'm breaking the third wall here, or the fourth wall, whatever they say. Are you making setups for the Rolex 24 for Daytona a couple of weeks from now? See if he responds to that. You know, last week as well, we didn't talk about it a lot as well. Um, but Tom Para finished, is not here tonight, but he finished fifth at Iowa last week. We didn't talk about that a lot until we saw the race results. In fact, we talked about it very little. And we just wanted to give credit to Para on surviving the chaos and coming home to finish in fifth position, his best finish, his first ever top five in the National Sim Racing League this season. So I want to give credit to him for that and a big congratulations to him on a great run. So eight laps to go, seven to go this time by. Let's compare the last five laps for those showing how fast Dylan Clark is. Hey, you see it. Look at that. Just over two seconds faster compared to Kayla McCarthy. It is just a smacking. At this rate currently, the margin of victory would be just about 55 seconds. Just had a change for fifth position, by the way. You saw it on your screen, Jimmy Barr. Making a pass on Alan Crowell. Let's rewind that, show you once again. That is a pass on the kink, and Crowell just let Jimmy Barr go by. Oh, 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 Barr off track. Barr is off track. That is just heading into turn 14. And Crowell takes the position back. That is something we did not expect. I think Sikosi went off track too. Let's show you how that happened. We were under replay. 
Oh man, look at him dodging those curves. It's like it's a cone slalom. Was he panicking in reaction to Mark? Nope, so that was a different spot. Sakosi off course once again. Over a 41 second lead for Dylan Clark on Kayla McCarthy. Let's reset the field here for you. Four cars on the lead lap. It's Dylan Clark, then followed up by Kayla McCarthy, Ryan Broderick, Tyler Isley. That's Alan Crowell, Jimmy Barr. That's the closest battle for fifth position. Going back to the 41 second lead for Dylan Clark last time, we saw smacking on the field was also at a road course. We saw Ashton Crowder take home the win at Sonoma Raceway. Just a dominant performance. Crowder's been putting on some good stuff. We haven't seen him in, a, in the past two races or so. Uh, six, six races and six wins this season. Ports oh, Josh Aaron! That's a hard crash. That is past the blinding corner, past the uphill. Not going to lose a position at all, but lost a ton of time to his teammate. Aaron currently in the eighth position for the DraftKings racing team. Back to the battle for fifth position between Crowell and Barr. At the moment, if you're keeping score. Oh no! Crowell! Oh no! And he's in the tires, and don't come back on the track. He holds on the brakes. The engine just went kaboom. Oh, my goodness. You hate to see that. We're going to have to rewind this. That's before the engine went kaboom. Let's ride at this point. That's from Barnes' perspective. Ah! That is the worst sound you ever want to hear. Crowell's chances of perhaps his best finish of the season is gone. Ah! That is a cringe-worthy sound. So that puts Jimmy Barr up into the fifth position. Needs one more spot to tie his best finish from last week. However, though, Tyler Isley is 42 seconds ahead. Barr looking a little bit clean right now compared to Tyler Isley's day. So we'll see what happens, but it's going to be very tough. Isley, next car behind him is the leader, but the leader is then Canada Corner. If you are keeping score at home, that was the closest battle on track. You know, we should give credit, by the way, give credit where credit is due to Josh Aaron in the number 77. Currently our... Biggest mover of the race. He started from 17th position, currently up into the 7th spot. Let's give the award to the driver with the most off-tracks at the moment. You would think from all the off-tracks we were talking about earlier that it would be Brian Presidar, especially with the corner in the Moraine straight not being his best friend. Well, folks, it's not him. Brian Wiggins out of the race in 15th position has 26 off tracks today. Brian Preslar has 18. In third is Mark Sikosi with excuse me, Josh, Just, J Justin Dilt 
with 15. Fourth is Josh Aaron with 14. Fifth is Sakosi with 12. A tie for six with 10 are Ryan Broderick and Jimmy Barr. Then with nine is Tyler Isley. Alan Crowell has seven. Six, David Salter. Five, Landon Lacey. Oh, no, Aaron! And around he goes. He's gone. A hard shot into turn one. The engine went kaboom again. The engines are starting to expire. Not lasting the lives that we expected. Well, you're ready for a nice onboard camera here. Yikes. Yikes is the proper word. So Josh Aaron's night comes to an end in seventh position. So we've got seven drivers currently on track. They are getting eliminated mano e mano. The only driver that's going to be left in this race is Dylan Clark. So now the question is, who's next? Who do you want to put your money on with four laps to go? I'm not going to say Broderick. I'm not going to go with Kayla. She's been clean today. The top two deserve to finish in the top two. Give me Tyler Isley, the next one to blow up. Not Barr. Not Swope either. Give me Tyler Isley as the next one to blow up. Every time someone's blown the engine, we've had them on camera. Fourth place finish for Tyler Isley likely today. Closest battle if you're keeping score at home is this battle for third between him and Broderick, which is a 20-second lead. The gap is increasing for Dylan Clark with four laps to go. It will be three laps to go this time by. 50-second lead. At this rate, Clark would win by 58 seconds. The ones that are on track, Tyler Isley, Jimmy Barr, the closest to each other, excuse me, Tyler Isley and Mark Sakosi are the closest to each other. And that's McCarthy, Swope, and speaking of Swope, just went off track in Canada Corner. He has gone around. Gets it going just in front of McCarthy. Mega Understeer once again. Let's see if we can get another angle of that. What happened? Check the brake rotors. I think I saw a lockup there too. So I think it was the lockup that really did it. Put Swope though in 6th position. Jimmy Barr in 5th. One position off from getting back to fourth position. 
But Dylan Clark putting on a great performance in his 11th start on the season. Best finish was a second that came in at both Chicagoland and at Charlotte in our World 350. At road courses this season, he finished third at Circuit of the America and a third at Sonoma. This one is looking a whole lot sweeter for the driver of the number 34. Let's ride on board with him. And reports to Kosi is in. And I don't think his engine went kaboom. It's still running. Two to go. So folks, there are only six cars on the track. Dylan Clark on board. This will be a win that will put him in the playoffs. Dylan Clark, by the way, came in as the 16th driver in via points in the playoffs coming on in. He'll be the 10th different winner on the season. Entering the kink and what God gave credit to iRacing. They have some sick camera angles. Fifty-five second lead on Kalen McCarthy. Gonna see the white flag this time by, one lap to go. The only driver that has not yet had an off track today. He has been perfectly clean as a whistle. There's the white flag, one lap to go for Dylan Clark. That is just a picture-perfect race for him today. And he goes down the Moraine Strait for the final time. Look at those characters from Sesame Street riding on the car for Dylan's nephew watching the race at home. And did Isley just go kaboom? No, he did not go kaboom, but around he went. Yeah, Chris, we're not talking with Tyler Isley. He just went around. Clark entering the carousel for the final time. 55 seconds to lead over Kayla McCarthy. I swear, we need a new rule here. We need a mercy rule in the National Sim Racing League. If someone's leading by over a specific period, the race ends. <laughs> Pass the kink. 
and into Canada Corner for the final time. We'll have back-to-back -back first time winners of the National Sim Racing League. Last week, it was David Salter. This week, it's gonna be Dylan Clark. Through 13, and now turn number 14. In the words of Johnny Taylor, it is a whooping. Dylan Clark put on the field today. Cookie Monsters going to victory lane with Dylan Clark in the home stretch. Dylan Clark takes the win at Road America. So Dylan Clark takes home the win. And now we wait for a couple of other drivers to come across the start finish line. Let's watch Kayla McCarthy in the number 24. Oh, reports Isley has crashed once again. He's calling it quits. I shouldn't say he's calling it quits. I think he just went across the start finish line. He just did, actually. Here's Kayla McCarthy through turn number 14. It's not had a podium since the Nashville Super Speedway. And he'll take home, she'll take home her fifth second place finish on the season. Kayla across the start finish line I'm finishes like second. And now we await, await Ryan Broderick into the carousel. He goes. Congratulations, Dylan Clark. That was an awesome race. Good job, all of you, Kayla, Ryan. Good racing. Will be Ryan's best finish in the National Sim Racing League. It's guaranteed to be a third place finish for him. As Isley's already gone across the start finish line. Best finish was fourth in his debut at Kentucky. Almost had the win at Iowa. This is going to be a feel good moment for Ryan after what went down in Iowa last week. His first ever podium finish. Through the final corner for Ryan Broderick. And it's Broderick's first ever podium in the NSRL. A nice run for Broderick tonight. Lacey is now retired. But it's Dylan Clark. That's your winner of the American 180. And we'll get your top five all in here. Dylan Clark's first ever win in the National Sim Racing League. And this is going to be a good burnout to watch. A car doing a burnout is equivalent to Cookie Monster eating cookies. Look at that. This is one of the more impressive ones we've seen. Burn that sucker down, Dylan. But see our third blown engine on camera. This one's the right way. Look at that. It's a pretty good one. Let's talk with our third place finisher here, Ryan Broderick. Ryan, uh, just walk us through your race. It was a good one and your best finish of the season. Yeah, um, well, Ben Holford just went off track quite a few times. I mean, kept the car clean, uh, spun out there, I believe, in the first stage, right in front of Kayla. It cost me a few spots. Fell back to six. I believe that's where I finished the first stage and the second stage. Got by Kayla and Icely at the start of the second stage and then finished towards the end of that second stage. Kept the car pretty much on track. That whole second stage was pretty clean. And then that last stage was kind of interesting with pit stops. I thought at the beginning we might be able to make it on field turns out. Wasn't quite the case. Kayla and all those guys over there realized that pretty early on and did their homework and made pit stops early and then we I paid it too late and they just killed me killed us on strategy and by the time you know I pit time was lost so and then 
then I made a mistake spinning out before I came to pit road, and that's kind of why I pitted that lap. And end up third, so can't complain. I'm sure this one, though, has to feel good after what happened last week in Iowa. Yeah, I mean, what happened last week in Iowa is just racing for the win. It's unfortunate, you know, you, you come off a of turn four with the white flag with one to go in the lead, and just that, you know, you end it up in ten, so, but it's just one of those things. Who do you want to give shout-outs to tonight? Oh, just everyone at Boston Racing to do a good job. So, uh, you know, <laughs> just can't thank them enough. Built good setups, worked together well, and uh, we were able to get top three because of it. Nice job tonight, Ryan. We'll let you go. Thank you. Ryan Broderick, a third-place finish for him tonight. Let's talk with our second-place finisher, Kayla McCarthy. Kayla, walk us through your race. I don't think you expected to get second place, and then all the madness just occurred. Uh, no, I didn't. I was really thinking, you know, I'd sit somewhere right around fourth or fifth or so. Um, had a really good battle there at Broadwick. Uh, I know he, he did block a couple times, and I got really frustrated and about sending him a couple times, but that's part of racing. Um, good points nice for us. Good uh, good nights for us points-wise for the team. Uh, Nitro setups, 1-2, KTS. TSM uh, team did a great job tonight. Who do you want to give shout outs to? Uh, first of all, for my wife for everything that she puts up with. Uh, Nitro Setup Shop, everybody at my team with KTS, Tyler Isley, Josh Stussy, uh, Brennan Poole when, when he can make it. I know he's got a lot going on. Um, Tyler Rush, Dylan, congrats Dylan on the on the win. Um, overall, just we're all clicking, and, and if we keep sticking clicking like this, look out for us in the playoffs. Absolutely. We'll let you go. Nice job tonight. Thank you. Kayla McCarthy, your second place finisher. Time to go to victory lane and talk with a first time winner, Dylan Clark. How does this feel, man? Oh, man, it feels amazing. Uh, this has been a long time coming. Um, ever since that second place at Chicago land, I just knew I had to get at some point in the regular season, I had to get in victory lane. Otherwise the season wasn't complete. Yeah, um, absolutely. And you were just the class of the field. How much practice did you put into this week? Um, I'd say a good amount, more than I usually do. Um, I knew that Road America was going to be a challenge. Super tight. Um, knew that Landon Lacey and South Sea and McCarthy were going to be quick. So uh, I needed to put in some time, and I did, and it paid off. It, it paid off. I'll tell you this as well. You were the only driver in the field not even to receive an off-track penalty. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. So, yeah. <laughs> I think your incident rate, what's, what's the incident rating at when you saw? Was it 0x by the time you blew up? So. so, yeah, there you I go. So. 0x. How about that? Who do you want to give shout-outs to tonight? Uh, Nitro, Russ, Kayla, ATS, uh, Z4 Motorsports, and uh, my parents for giving me this awesome sim rig all right sounds good dylan congrats on the win man enjoy it thank you sir dylan clark takes home his first career national sim racing league victory here are the official results only three drivers finish on the lead lap dylan clark kayla mccarthy and ryan broderick i think we've got a couple of heartbreaks we can give here josh josh aaron and uh, alan crowell Blowing up. Landon Lacey, the biggest heartbreak, 11th place. Had a car that was contending for the win. Unfortunately, had that one big off track where he put it in the wall and uh, just parked it. He said he was done. Josh Susi, same with him. Uh, his night came into an end uh, 19 laps early. So, and our 19th, so that is how the official results look. 16 drivers only getting credit for taking the start. Austin Griffey, Razor Cart, you can ignore them. So that'll do it for our live coverage tonight of the National Sim Racing League Cup Series. Join us again next week at the Gateway at Gateway uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway. Start time is 8.45 on the National Sim Racing League Facebook page as well as twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala. Shout out to our sponsors, Speed Demon Setups, Graphics and TV, Affordable SEO and Marketing, Elevate Outdoors, and butt kicker on behalf of everyone 
at the National Sim Racing League. Mark Sikosi, Justin Delts, Chris Lynn, our race director, Marty Sakala sign off for tonight. Congratulations to Dylan Clark. He's a first-time winner of the National Sim Racing League at Road America. So long, everyone.